Hey everyone, uh, so the project that we're going to work on is we're going to make a Pac-Man game and we're going to make it as real as possible, so let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, if I go too fast, don't worry about it, we're just going to, um, uh, you can always just pause and you can rewind as you need. So the first thing we need to do is go to our Mount Vernon Woods website and click on the menu, click on the full menu and go to student links. We're going to be using a program called Scratch. So Scratch is down here in the technology section. It's the one with the cat on it. So I'm going to click on Scratch. OK. Uh, we're not going to use this cat, so we're going to get rid of this cat. And the first thing that we probably should work on is the background. So we're going to go over to this stage and see where it says Backdrops. So we're going to go ahead and click on this Backdrop and we're going to paint our own. Okay. Um, there are two different types of drawings that we can do. One is called bitmap. It's not as uh, clean as the as vector. This It's currently in vector. We're going to get rid of backdrop number two. We just need backdrop number one. And uh, But we need bitmap because you can do some things in bitmap. Uh, first, so we're going to fill. We're going to go to go to bitmap, and then we're going to go to fill, and we're going to change our color to black, and we're going to fill our whole screen in black, because that's the way a Pac-Man game looks. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to vector, and we're going to pick the rectangle. We don't want anything filled into our rectangle. We want it to be empty. And we want the uh, outline of our um, our walls and things like that. That's what we're going to start drawing first. We want it to be kind of a deep blue. So you can see that as I move these around, this changes the color of the outline. And we want it to be kind of a deep blue, like that. So you just kind of have to play around with it a little bit. If you really wanted to look for the colors that I'm going to choose, as far as the, the colors for the walls that I'm using, uh, you can you can look at these numbers that I have here. This is 67, this one's 100, this one's 55. And that one looks like a nice blue, so we're going to try that out and we'll see how that goes. All right, so we're drawing, drawing a rectangle. You hold them. Oh, we need to change the thickness of the walls to probably about 15 is probably okay. So, um, we don't want to go all the way to the walls or all the way up or all the way down. We're going to leave a little tiny bit of space for the score bar. And then we're just going to draw one big rectangle. We can go all the way to the side. Let's try it again. There we go. There, that should do it. Now, if you remember the Pac-Man game, the classic Pac-Man game, we have some uh, where they have the extra lives and stuff like that goes down here. So that's something that we're going to have to uh, leave some space for also. Okay, so that looks like this is what it looks like when it's in the game. This looks pretty good, so we're going to stick with that. Um, we need to just click off of it so that it kind of locks in and then click back on the rectangle again because we're going to do... We're going to do quite a few, so um, now that I've drawn one, I want to keep it the same color. This is really important because our Pac-Man relies on the color, so I'm going to use this button. This button uh, helps me choose the exact same color I did for this for the previous rectangle. All right, I'm going to draw another rectangle inside this rectangle, and I want to make sure that I'm leaving enough space for my Pac-Man to move. Now, I know you don't know how big your Pac-Man is going to be. But it's going to be, you know, the Pac-Man size. So, like, you want to make sure that you're leaving yourself a little space. And it has to be the same amount of space, roughly. Oops. Uh, you can see I forgot to take the fill off. So, if I make a mistake, I can always hit this undo button. And then let's try this again. And... Let's see, that looks pretty good. So that looks like I'm leaving about the same amount of space on all sides. Maybe this is a little bit narrow on that side. So I could grab my arrow, and that will allow me to move this around a little bit. 
But really, the important thing is that I'm leaving the same amount of space. If I need to adjust a little bit, I can adjust a little bit by moving the sides, too. All right. So that looks pretty good. That looks like enough like a real Pac-Man game would have. And then I'm just going to do two more. I'm going to do one. Now you, again, you want to make sure that they're they're evenly spaced as best you can. Because if you don't, when you draw your Pac-Man, or when you make your Pac-Man game, he's not going to be able to move around. If you make it too narrow, he's going to get stuck. And we don't want him to get stuck. And if you leave too much space, he could get in trouble too, because the codes will get all messed up. So we want to try to do the best we can. Uh, if you want to go a little bit simpler, I'm drawing... Uh, I'm going to draw four rectangles in total. If you wanted to do less and do three, that would be fine. Okay, this last one is going to be... Um, this last one is going to be really for the ghosts, okay? So... This is where the ghost will kind of uh, hop around and then and then come out. All right. All right. So far, so good. So this kind of looks like the beginning of a maze. Now you may be thinking, how is how is everybody going to get from one place to another? Well, that's that's up to you. So this is the part where it's up to you. We're going to now take our our rectangle. I need to switch off of this rectangle. If I don't, then it, it'll change this color. So. I need to switch off and back on. I'm going to change my rectangle to black by moving this all the way over. And I'm this time I'm going to get rid of my outline. And when I draw, I'm going to pick some spots. I'm, this one in the middle you leave alone, okay? But I'm going to pick some spots to draw some rectangles to kind of make some openings. See, so I want to make some openings that are big enough for my Pac-Man to go through and the ghosts to go through. And if I like that one, which I do, I'm going to copy. That looks like it's the right amount of space so that it's not going to lock everybody up. And I'm going to put the, a couple of these throughout my game so that there's uh, places for my Pac-Man to go. But you don't want to put too many in there that it's not going to be a challenge. So I'm going to paste another one and then move it around. And it's kind of nice to have some symmetry so that it's the same going left as it is on the right. It just makes it look better. But you can see over here, this is kind of a preview of what it's going to look like. That looks pretty good. This one probably needs to be moved over just a little tiny bit. Paste another one. Um, maybe right here. And now you can see that it's starting to look a little bit more like a maze. We can put as many of these as we want, as long as it's, like I said, not going to change how challenging the game is. And you can put them, you don't have to put them where I'm putting them. You can put them anywhere you want. It's your game. You do what you want. All right, be creative. Um, let's see. So I'm thinking I'm going to put maybe a couple on this one here. And then that should be enough.
So you can see that when I just copied the shape that I liked and pasted it, it made it very simple. It made it very easy for me to do this very quickly. This one's kind of a long run, so now I'm thinking that I don't want to. I, I want to put a couple more in there. So uh, because what happens if I am going this way, then my Pac-Man is really kind of stuck. So um, I'm thinking now that I need to add a couple of escapes uh, just to just to make sure that I'm not making it impossible for my Pac-Man. So I want to paste a couple more in there just to be safe. Maybe just one there. Uh, as you can see, sometimes I accidentally grab the background, but that's okay. We just go back and undo it. Okay, not bad. So, I mean, you know, I've had some practice, but like the, this is basically um, this is basically how you're going to do your background, something like that. So you see, we did it pretty quick. It was only a couple a couple of uh, rectangles that we made. So, and this can be in as exact as you want. Um, you can be as detailed as you want, uh, but that's good enough for me. After you do everything, you're going to save your file. And so you go to file and you're going to say save to your computer. You don't get a chance to give it a name. That's the only unfortunate thing. Um, but it gets saved automatically to your downloads file. If you get this caution, it's okay. Just say continue, okay? Um, so this is pretty much our background. Now, um, now we need to make our characters. So we're going to go to this section here where it says create a sprite. And we're going to click the paint. The first character that we're going to draw is Pac-Man. Pac-Man, of course, is a circle. And we're going to have him facing in this direction here. But the first one, I'm going to zoom in a little bit because the more I can use these squares, the better. Because it kind of gives you a gauge of how round your circle is going to be. All right, obviously, that looks pretty good. But I want him to be uh, yellow, so we need to change... We need to change it. And he's kind of like a... That actually looks not bad. There, that looks pretty good. All right, and we're not gonna use a background or a, an outline. If we use an outline, that's gonna get in the way. So we're not going to do that. I'm gonna leave him closed for this first costume. And, uh, but the other thing that we need to do is we need to add a little black circle. Well, actually, we'll do that at the end. So let's go ahead and and just change the the costume. So we're going to right click on this. If you don't know what right click means, it means that we're using the the clicker on the right button of your mouse, and we're going to duplicate this. Now we are going to take this second costume. We need to make a bunch of costumes for our Pac-Man. So we're going to take the second costume. We're going to convert to bitmap, and the reason why is because this bitmap lets us do a lot of editing. So I'm going to make a rectangle, and I want it. I want it filled. Let's see. I'm going to take my rectangle. Actually, I'm going to take it and make it a different color. Let's make it red. And I'm going to draw it over here, like a little square like this. And I'm going to rotate it. And I want to make it more of a rhombus shape. And try to get it to go as close to that center as you can. So, and the edge is here. Because we're going to take this. 
and we're going to fill it in with empty space. So this is a good, uh, this is a good shape where it's just kind of closed. Like, so this is Pac-Man with a closed mouth and now it's starting to open and we're going to take this fill and we're going to change the color to nothing and fill that in. And now you can see that Pac-Man is, is, um, you know, got his mouth partially open. And you can see this is what he looks like here. Don't worry that he's too big because we're gonna resize him in the code. So that's okay. We're gonna take this one and we're gonna duplicate that. And this time we're going to make his mouth a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna draw a nice, nice square. I'm gonna rotate it. I'm going to try to get as close to that center as I can. And you can see that this one makes it a little bit more wide than the last one, which is what I want. And I'm going to take this and fill it with an empty square. And there we go. Uh, so now I have, I have a closed Pac-Man, a slightly open Pac-Man, a wider mouth Pac-Man. And then I want him to close again. So I'm going to go back to this number two and I'm going to duplicate that and change the order. So the, what I want it to happen every time is that I want it to go look like he's starting to open his mouth. He's going to close his mouth and then I'm going to repeat this pattern in my code. So it's going to constantly look like, like he's, he's opening his mouth and you can kind of see what it looks like. This is kind of an animation, a computer animation what our Pac-Man is going to look like, okay? Um, now, we also need to create what Pac-Man looks like when he, um, if he, if he gets caught by the ghost. So we're gonna duplicate number three again, and move it down. But this time, we're gonna draw this box around him, because when Pac-Man gets caught by the ghosts, he kind of turns belly up. So we're going to take that and rotate him. We drew this box. This is a box around him. And we grab the um, the little rotation bar that's right here. And that makes him turn around. So this is what Pac-Man looks like when he's dying. You want to make sure that we're going to click on our image. And you see right here where this plus sign is. That's the center of our drawing. We want that to line up with the center of our uh, sprite. So that... Uh, our codes work out okay and you should check that on all of these too I'll do that right now it's easier if you convert it to vector so you can see that they're pretty much online so I, I'm, I'm not gonna mess around with it too much nope that one's a little bit off okay so all right, so back to our, our dying Pac-Man. So our dying Pac-Man is going to look like this. We're going to duplicate this one. And this time we're going to can't do that. change the color. This time we're going to cut them in half because that's the second step. You have to think about this like a cartoon. So, I mean, that's really what this is, is that we're drawing a little cartoon of a, of a Pac-Man and we need to see what that looks like. So now, as he disappears, this is what Pac-Man looks like. Now you can go to YouTube and see what Pac-Man uh, Pac game looks like, or um, Google had, uh, had a nice one the other day that uh, it was kind of a Pac-Man game that you could play. But I think it's more fun if you can actually make it. So, I duplicate that one. And I use the duplicate quite a bit because it's a lot easier to duplicate than it is to uh, draw everything from scratch every time. And this time we're going to come and make it look like that last piece of pie.
draw another one right here. And fill these in. And then the last one that we're going to do, well, actually, we've got to do two more. So the last one, it looks like just a little bit of a line. So we're going to kind of just leave it like a little tiny line. Like that. And then the last one, I'm only duplicating it because I want the, I want the color to stay the same. So the last one, when you see Pac-Man, it looks like a little bit of like an asterisk, like kind of like a, like a starburst type of look. So we're going to copy this and then we're going to paste it. And I'll show you what it's going to look like. We're going to put that above the plus sign about the same distance. Let me shrink this down a little bit more. Uh, I don't like that. Let's put that back. All right. And then we'll paste another one. I'll rotate it around. Take this one and put it over here. You can see what it looks like over here. So don't forget that you can see. And again, don't worry about the size because we're not we're not really worrying about the size right now. All only thing we care about is the pictures. We're gonna resize it based on what we need later. There we go. So we get this nice little starburst, you know, it makes that little pop sound when it when he disappears. And that's pretty good. This is what we want. We want we want Pac-Man to look kind of like this when he, when he disappears, okay? All right. I like what I've done. I'm going to save it. Now, that is our Pac-Man. We're not going to write any of the code right now. What I'm concerned about is really just the artwork, okay? The artwork of our game today. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we need to draw one of our ghosts. Now, we only really need to draw one. We're going to draw Inky. So I'm going to go to my sprite. I'm going to paint. And... Uh, this is where I hope your art teacher has done some done a good job of showing you how to draw things with different shapes. Inky is a light blue ghost. This looks pretty good. I like that color. That's a good inky color. All right, we'll zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to draw a circle to start with. Okay, no outline. Outlines are really no good. They get in the way of our code. So um, we can make it the same size as Pac-Man, but it, it, it's really not important. Again, we're going to resize it based on our needs. So we really are just worrying about the shape. So if you want to draw it nice and big so that you can give it as much detail as you can, go ahead. Um, I'm just going to leave it around this size. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Um, Okay, so this is gonna be the first part of our ghost. The second part of our ghost is a rectangle. I'm gonna keep the same uh, same color, obviously. And I'm going to draw a rectangle that goes right underneath of the circle so that we kind of have this appearance that it is one 
consistent shape, but it's really not. It's really, um, it's really two different shapes. I want it to be a little bit short because we're still adding a little something to the bottom of this, and we don't want it to be too tall. All right. Now the third thing to make the ghost in the classic Pac-Man, what we're going to do is we're going to draw some circles on the bottom. Just about three of them. And we want them to be about the same size, so I'm just going to go ahead And I'm going to copy and paste this image. All right, and this is kind of the classic shape, but I know I'm not really happy with that. I'm gonna make these a little bit longer. And that's really the classic shape of the Pac-Man, so, of the Pac-Man Ghost. So, there's Inky. Now, another way that we could do this, and I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to do it a different way. So, I, because even though this is the way the classic looks, I'm not really, I don't really like the way that looks. So, I'm going to go ahead and take those back. And I'm going to show you a different way. I'm going to make this rectangle a little bit longer. And then I'm going to convert this to bitmap. And this time, I'm going to take my circle... and change that color and for me I like this a little bit better I'm going to take these shapes and I'm going to erase them it kind of is going to give it more of that kind of cut sheet ghost look that I kind of like so I'm going to take this and then I'm going to fill it like that. And I'm just going to do that a couple of times. Okay, and I like this a little bit better, honestly. I'm going to take this eraser and get rid of some of these kind of dirty edges down there, but I kind of like the way that looks a little bit better. So I'm going to go back to Victor, Vector, and now I need to draw his eyes. Now you can choose either one, either ghost you want. That's up to you. So now it's time to draw his eyes. So this time we want the fill to be white. So we're going to take the saturation, and we're going to do fill that saturation in. Uh, so it's nice and, and white colored, and we're just going to draw a couple of big eyes right here. One, we'll draw another one right here. Try to make sure that they're as even as possible. Okay, very simple. Now we're going to take, we need to do some pupils, so we're going to make those black. And we're just gonna put them right in the middle. That looks pretty good. Actually, so that I'm not messing this up, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste that so that they're both the same size. Because if they're not the same size, it can look really awkward. All right, what do you think? Those, that, looks, that looks pretty good. That looks like a good little ghost there. All right, so now we have one of our ghosts. 
Uh, we need to change his costume name to 90. Okay, so what that means is that our, our natural position of our ghost is going to be 90 degrees. So at 90 degrees, it means that that's the way he's going to look if he's going in that 90 degree direction. So as long as he's going in the 90 degree direction, then that's going to be good. Um, we're going to duplicate this ghost because he's not always going to be going to the right. 90 degrees is to the right. So sometimes he's going to be going to the left. So what we want to do is we want to take this image and we're going to flip it vertical. And if he's going in and, and we're going to change this to a negative 90, a minus 90. For those of you in third grade, you may not know what negative numbers are, but uh, negative numbers means in this case, well, for coding, we're going to the left, okay? So if he's going to the left, he's going to, he's, we need to change the way his costume looks. This will make sense next week when we go over the coding, all right? Um, we need two more because sometimes he goes up and sometimes he goes down. In Scratch, if he's going up, it's going to be zero degrees. So we're going to go back and we're going to duplicate our 90, because that's our original. And I'm going to change this to zero. Uh, now for zero degrees, we need to change this to bitmap. And we need to draw the box around our ghost. And we need to rotate him so that he's going in this direction. So again, if I'm going to, we need to change this to zero. If he's going up, our degrees is zero. So you have to understand, like if he's going in this direction and he's supposed to go up, his costume's gotta be rotated around. Otherwise, when he travels, he's gonna look like he's going sideways. So we just wanna make this the best one that we can. And sometimes he's gonna go down. So we're gonna copy this one and we're going to flip it horizontal. So now he's going in that direction and that would be 180. So, 90 degrees is right, 0 degrees is up, uh, 180 degrees is down, and 90, negative 90 degrees is to the left. So now we have all of our ghosts. Right now, we're not going to do any more ghosts because it'll be easier once we write the code to just copy this guy and then, and then change the colors. We'll fill in the colors later. So right now, that is it. I am going to stop right now. We're going to save to our computer. If you needed to stop halfway through your programming or, or drawing and you needed to stop, you should always save after everything. And then if you wanted to load it back from your computer, you just go to file and you say load from your computer. And you'll see right here that I have a billion scratch projects and they haven't been named, okay? The ones that you would want to do are going to be the scratch projects and each one, each time you save, it gives you a different number. You want the one with the highest number. That's the latest one that you've done, okay? So you're gonna do scratch project number two, for in my case, because that's how many I've saved. I saved it three times, so this is the original, and this is the second time I saved, and then this is the third time I saved. So this is the top, the biggest number of my projects. So I would just load from here and then it'll load up your old program. Um, so for right now, this is all we're going to do. If you need help, you can rewind and you can schedule office hours. You do not need to schedule office hours unless you need help. Um, that's what the office hours are for. They're, they're not, you, you don't fill out that form unless you need the help. I hope you enjoy making this. Next week, we will go over the codes. The codes are really long, so uh, I hope you're ready for it, but I think that you'll be happy once, once you're done. Thanks. Have a good week.